G'day everyone, my name is Barney and today I'm going to show you how to make some really cool generative art inside of P5.js as well as a really sick effect to go along with it. So crack open your code editor and let's get started. Alright, so we've just got a very blank P5.js sketch here. This is just the default that comes if you use the online editor like I am here. So you can see it's just got a setup function which is creating a canvas and I've made mine 600 by 600 pixels. And then in the draw function which gets called every single frame, we're just setting the background to be a really light grey colour and you can see that on the right here. So there's two parts to what we're going to be doing today. So there's the actual scanner effect itself, but in order to do the scanner effect, I'm not really sure what to call it, I'm just calling it the scanner effect. If you've got a better name, let me know in the comments. But so there's the scanner effect itself, and then there's also the image that we're going to do the scanner effect on. Now, you can of course do this on absolutely any image that you want, but for me, I think it works best if it's a really bold and simple image. So we're gonna be generating an image and then once we've got that image, we're gonna do the scanner effect on it. So if you've already got an image in mind and you just wanna see how to do the scanner effect, there'll be a chapter in the timeline that you can skip to for the scanner effect. But first we're gonna make this swirly, bold, patterned, colored image. And so we'll get to that straight away and we're gonna use Perlin noise to do it. For now, we're just gonna create a background canvas. So we can do this by declaring a BG variable, which stands for background. And then in the setup function, we're using the create graphics function, which will create a separate graphics instance from the main canvas that lets us draw to essentially what is an image that's off screen. The image that I'm creating is gonna be the same size as the canvas. And then what I'm doing is I'm creating a function called create background or create BG, which will create our background image. And we're gonna call that in the setup because we just wanna create it once at the start and then keep reusing that image. But of course, calling this function won't actually do anything yet because our create BG function is empty. So let's start working on filling that out. So what we're gonna be doing for the background is using Perlin noise, but then creating bands within that noise of solid colors. So normally when you do Perlin noise, people visualize it as just a black to white gradient. And we're gonna start with that and then I'm gonna make it all colorful. So for starting with just the black to white gradient, what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop through all of the pixels in our background image. And to do that, we're just gonna use two for loops here. So we've got I that goes between zero and the width of our background image. And then we've also got J that goes between zero and the height of the background image. And then inside that, we're gonna read the noise value for this location. So if you're unfamiliar, Perlin noise is a really cool noise function where you can get random values from it, but they're all sort of connected to neighboring values. And P5.js makes this super easy because there's a noise function built in and I'm about to show you how to use it. So we're gonna read the noise value for the current location on the screen, which is stored in the I and J variables. So I'm doing a few things here. So firstly, I'm getting N, which is the noise value at I and J location in our Perlin noise. And this will be a value between zero and one. And then I'm using that to set the stroke color. So I'm timesing it by 255. We're setting the stroke to be black if this N is zero and white if it's one. And then everything in between for all the values between zero and one. So we get a nice gradient between black and white. And then lastly, we're drawing a point at the I and J location on the background image. So this is important. We're drawing on the actual background graphics. So you can do all of the normal drawing operations on a graphics that you've created with the create graphics. You just have to make sure that you're calling that function on the actual graphic object. Cause if you leave this off, it'll just do it on the main canvas. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this background call with drawing our BG image. So by using the image function, we can pass in our graphics object as an image and then give it a rectangle on the screen to draw in. So we're starting at zero, zero and the rectangle has a width of width and a height of height because we wanna put that image onto our screen. But you can notice that the noise that it's generating looks, uh, well, it looks kind of interesting, but not what we were going for because I said it looked like clouds. And the reason that is, is we're passing in the coordinates directly but Perlin noise works a lot better if you're zoomed in a long way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a noise scale and we're gonna multiply our coordinates by that scale to zoom in on this noise. So I've set this noise scale variable to be 0 0.01 and you can see down here when we're getting the noise, I'm just multiplying our I and J coordinate by that noise scale. And as you can see on the right, we've got that cloudy texture that I was promising before. And this noise scale is something that you can absolutely play around with and I really encourage you to do that and see how it affects the noise that we get here. But I think I'm happy with this 0.01. So what we're gonna do now is move on to making this colored instead of this gradient. So what we need now is a list of colors and I've actually done a bit of homework on this. I've gotten four colors that I think kind of work together. I mean, I'm no artist, so 
you know, I'm sure you can come up with some much nicer colors than me, but these are the list of colors that I came up with. I've got a reddish color, a green, an orange, a yellow, and a blue. And we're gonna use these to color in bands of this noise. So first we need to figure out our band value and that's going to be the whole number part of n times our number of bands. And of course we haven't defined number of bands yet so we'll do that quickly now. And then we're going to use this band value to figure out which color we need to select. And we do that by using the modulo operator between the band and the number of colors that we've got. And then we can use this color to figure out our color in the colors array and set that as the stroke. And just like that, we've gone from a boring black and white image to some very funky looking colors on the right here. So you can see where before we had smooth transitions between the colors, because we've used this integer operator, we've got these distinct zones of color. You can play around with the number of bands. So if I make this a smaller value like eight, you can see we get these thicker sections of color. And if we made it something really big, like for example, 32, we get much thinner zones. And I think I'm gonna leave it at 16 like I had before. So we've now generated the image that we're gonna use for our scanner effect so we can move on to the effect itself. Now, if you didn't wanna go the route of generating an image for this effect, you can upload your own. And to do that, you would come across here to the files of your sketch and you can click upload file. And in here, you can put any image you like. So I've uploaded an image here that is the P5JS logo and I'm gonna just use this to demonstrate how you would do it with your own image if you're not gonna be using the generated one. So once you've got it uploaded, what you can do is you can create the preload function, which gets called before the setup function, and it allows you to do any sort of loading of stuff that you need. So I've written the preload function and in it, you can see I'm using the load image function to load in the image that I want into the background image. And to do that, you just pass in the name of the file that you wanna load. So in this case, I've got p5js.png. I've for the moment just commented it out what we've just done where we are generating the image. What we're doing now is we're just directly showing this image that we've loaded as the background image. So that's all you need to do if you wanna upload an image and use it yourself. I'm gonna go back to using our generated image from before. So the first thing we're gonna to need to code this is we're gonna to have to keep track of the Y position that we're currently drawing from. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a variable called Y. And it's gonna start at zero, which is the top of the screen. Now, one thing we do wanna do is once this effect reaches the bottom of the screen, I'm gonna have it come back up. So we're gonna to need to keep track of which direction this Y value should be moving in. So I'm gonna create that as well and say let dir equals one. So one is a positive value, which means that the Y is gonna increase and move down the screen. So now in our draw function, what we wanna do is we wanna start scanning across the rows at our current Y location and drawing lines down that match those colors. And to do that, we're just gonna create a for loop that goes between zero and the width of the screen. So now we've got an X variable that goes between zero and the width of the screen. And in combination with the Y variable we just created, we've now got a coordinate onto a pixel on the image that we're drawing onto the screen. So what we can do now is we can use the get function to get the color of our image at that given location. So once we've got that color, we can make that the stroke color and draw a line from this X and Y location to the bottom of the screen. And that's as simple as setting the stroke color to this color that we just got from the get function and using the line function to draw a line from the X and Y location to X and the height. But as you can see, there's something weird going on with my lines. So I'm just gonna quickly try and figure out what's going on there. 
So all I've done to fix that weirdness was I set the stroke weight to two and I think what was going on was the lines weren't quite pixel perfect. So there was a bit of the image beneath bleeding through. So all I've done is I've set the stroke weight to two, which makes these lines two pixels wide in theory. But because we're drawing a line every single pixel, we should still hopefully be getting the correct colors in each line of the pixels. So it's a bit dodgy, but I think that's the workaround that's gonna work. But as you can see, we're just now getting lines on our screen, but we want the lines to be moving down and scanning our image. So what we need to do is once we've drawn our lines for this current Y level is after we've done that and for the next frame of the animation, we wanna increase the Y value. And we can do that by adding the direction onto the Y variable. And as you can see on the right, we've now got our scanner effect working, but there's an issue. When this gets to the bottom of the screen, like I was saying earlier, I want it to come back up, but at the moment it just disappears off the end of the screen. So we'll quickly fix that. So to fix it, what I've done is I've just got an if statement here that says if the Y is less than or equal to zero or the Y is greater than the height, we're gonna flip the direction by multiplying it by negative one. And as you can see there, it just hit the bottom and it's now working its way back up. So there we go, we've used P5.js to generate some pretty cool looking art as well as an awesome effect that I still don't know what to call. If you've got a better idea of what to call it than the scanner effect, please let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing if you wanna see more videos like this as well. I've linked a video here that shows you some other really cool stuff you can do with Perlin Noise and otherwise there's a playlist here with all my other P5.js videos in it so you can become a code wizard in no time at all. I hope to see you again soon.